Now again, in India, the notion is that energy and movement is female. The idea of Shakti, female. Uh, the male is just asleep. Let me alone. I just want to be alone. And this twinkle female goes past and whispers to him with such and such, so and so. And wouldn't it be nice to start the world again? And he thinks, yes, it would. And uh, so he is activated. And this river flowing past, rippling along, is activating the imagination of the sleeping giant. Now, this sleeping giant can be compared to the sleeping Vishnu. And from Vishnu's navel grows the dream in the form of a lotus. The lotus is Padma, a goddess. Lakshmi Padma, the goddess, lotus, and good fortune. But when you see uh, the pictures of sculptures of Vishnu sleeping, dreaming with the lotus, his wife, Lakshmi, or, uh, is at his feet massaging his feet. She's also the lotus. She's in two roles. One, massaging the feet. Just, uh, here I am, dear. And, uh, and he thinks about her and then you have the dream. So this irritating moment is going to be uh, through the story. And I'll just read the first page um, to uh, let you hear how this book sounds. And I'll spend a little while telling you what, what you've heard. River Run past even Adams, from swerve of shore to bend of bay, brings us by a commodious vicus of recirculation back to Hoth Castle and environs. Sir Tristram Violaire d'Amores had pas encore re-arrived from North America, this side the scraggy isthmus of Europe minor, to wield to fight his peninsula's war. Nor had Top Sawyer's rocks by the stream of Coney exaggerated themselves to Lawrence County's Gorgios while they went doubling their mumper all the time. Nor a voice from a fire below said, this should, this should, to tough town to watch the tree. Not yet the vent soon after had a kid's cat but ended the bland old Isaac. Not yet though all's fair in vanity, with saucy sisters wroth with twone not on Joe. Brought a peck of past malt, had Gemma Shen proved by our clyp, and Rory and two, the ragged brows to be seen, rings of the money, what face. The fall. Ba 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 dal harag de kamina run con run ton a run twan thun, drove bar horn on scorn, too hoo 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 did the nook of a once walled straight old par, is retailed early in bed and later on life down to all Christian minstrelsy. The great fall of the off wall and tail that such short notice the shoot of Finnegan, earth solid man, that the humpy hill head of himself comfortably sends an inquiring one well to the west in quest of his company company. And their upturned pike point place is at the knock out in the park where oranges have been laid to rust upon the green since Devlin's first love living. How she was brightened when Shulgrubs in his glaubrin hoxkeed his welcome strip, and how she was overclosed when knee snobs on his thrill was make acting such a pulse of himself. She was alone. All her new beef companions were sleeping with the squirrels. Their miver, Mrs. Moonen, was off in the first quarter scrubbing the back steps of number 28. Further that scanned, he was up in Norwood Sokopala eating oceans of Vulcan's blemish. Novaletta listened as she reflected herself, though the heavenly one with his constellatria and his emanations stood between. And she tried and she tried all to make the muxa look up at her, but he was far too adaptiosiously far-seeing, and to make the gripes hear how coy she could be, though he was much too systematically auricular about his ends to heed her, but it was all mild vapor moist. Not even her faint reflection to Voluccio could they talk their noses off. For their minds with intricacy, faith, and boneless curiosity were conclaved with Heliogobolus and Commodus and Obabarus and whatever the cordial dickens they did, as their damp brow of Papyrus and Bookstop said, as if that was their spiration. 
as if theirs could die if parade her green day, as if she would be third thirty to search on surf pussy. She tried all the winsome, wonsome ways her fall winds had fought. Her. She tossed her spumastellationist hair like La Princesse de la Petite de Time. And she rounded her minions' arms like Mrs. Cornwallis West. And she smiled over herself like the beauty of the image of the pose of the daughter of the Queen of the Emperor of Ireland. And she sighed after herself as were she born to bride with Christus, Christiorchus, Christus. But sweet, not a nine, she might fare as well have carried her daisies where she flowed. For the muxa, a dogmat aconite, is not a moose, and the gripes, a doubly boozed Catholic, is pinefully oblivious. I see, she sighed, there are men, I'm going to skip the next page. Then Nouvelletta reflected for the last time in her little long life, and she made up all her myriads of drifting lines in one. She cancelled all her engorgements. She climbed over the banister. She gave a childy, cloudy cry. New A, new A. A light dress fluttered, she was gone. And into the river that had been a stream, for a thousand of tears had gone the on her and come on her, and she was stout, stuck on dancing, and her muddy name was Mrs. Liffey. There fell a tear, a single tear, the loveliest of all tears. I mean for those Cry Love Fables fans who are keen on the pretty, pretty common face sort of thing you meet by Hope Harrods. For it was a leap, dear. But the river tripped on her by and by, lapping as though her heart was brook. Why, oh why, way, oh way. I so silly to be flowing, but I know can stay. No applause, please. Fast. The Ramscott Napasaka will go round your circulation in the outdoors. Alloy Major, I'll take your reaction in another place after Thebes. Nolan Brown, you may now leave the classroom. Joe, Peters, Bonds. But you're changing it, Kushla. You're changing from me, I can feel. Or is it me, is? I'm getting mixed. Brightening up and tightening down. Yes, you're changing, son, husband, and you're turning. I can feel you for a daughter, wife, from the hills again, Imla Maya. And she is coming, swimming in my hindmost, divil taking on me tail. Just a whisk, brisk, sly, spry, spink, spank, sprint of a thing there, somewhere saltering. Salterella come to her own. I pity your old self I was used to. Now a youngest there. Try not to part. Be happy, dear one. May I be wrong. For she'll be sweet for you as I was sweet when I came down out of me mother, my great blue bedroom, the air so quiet, scarce a cloud, in peace and silence. I could have stayed up there for always, only if something fails us, first we feel, then we fall, and let her reign now if she likes, gently or strongly as she likes. Anyway, let her reign, for my time is come. I'd done me best when I was led, thinking always if I go, all goes. A hundred cares, a tide of troubles. And is there one who understands me? One in a thousand of years of the night? All me life I have been lived among them, but now they are becoming loathed to me. And I'm loathing their little warm tricks, and loathing their mean cozy turns. And all the greedy gushes out of their small souls, and all the lazy leaks down over their brash bodies. How small it's all. And me letting on to myself always and lilting on all the time. I thought you were all glittering with the noblest of carriage. You're only a bumpkin. I thought you the great in all things, in guilt and glory. You're but a puny. Home. My people were not of their sort out beyond there so far as I can. For all the bold and bad and bleary they are blamed, the sea hags. No. Not for all their wild dances and all their wild din. I can see myself among them. Alan Yuvia Pulcra belled. How she was handsome, the wild Amazia, when she would seize to my other breast. And what is she weird, haughty my Luna, that she will snatch from my honest hair? For tis they are the stormies. Ho oh, hang, hang ho, and the clash of our cries till we spring to be free. Or of old, they says, never heed of your name. But I'm loathing them that's here and all I loathe. Lonely in the loneliness for all their faults. I'm past.
passing out, all bitter ending. I'll slip away before they're up. They'll never see, nor know, nor miss me. And old, it's old, it's sad, and old, it's sad, and weary. I go back to you, my cold father, my cold, mad father, my cold, mad, fiery father, till the near sight of the mere size of him, the moils and moils of it, moan and only, makes me salt, silt, sea sit, and I rush my only into your arms. I see them rising. Save me from those terrible crumbs. Two more. One two more means more. So, Ave Laval. My leaves have drifted from me, all, but one clings still. I'll bear it on me, to remind me of so soft this morning, ours. Yes. Carry me along, Taddy, like you've done through the toy fair. If I seen him bearing down on me now, under white spread wings, he like he'd come from archangels, I think I'd die down over his feet, humbly dumbly, only to wash up. Yes, did. There's where first we passed through grass, we hushed the bush to shagull. Gulls, far calls, coming, far, end here. Us then, fin again, but take, but softly, remember me, till thou since thee, lips, the keys too, given, away, a last, alone, a loved, along the river runs, past through the Adams, it's where we're sure to bend a bay, brings us by a commodious papers of recirculation, back to Hope. And environs. The river has gone out to sea. Back. We can either stay in the sea with Father Ocean and what was to have been the story of Book Four, the fourth work, or come back here and go round to round of reincarnations and rebirth. So that uh, the great Daedalus flight. Joyce, from his uh, labyrinth environment, then breaking from his own ego environment, uh, yielding with compassion to the world in this, that, the other of its manifestations, finally identifying himself with the ground, the great uh, common ground that uh, shows itself through all the forms of our lives, um, he speaks for them in this work.